our next speaker is Poliana Penteado, and she will talk about Bewegung and Bulk Edge Landos in a Tunneling 2D Topological Insulators. Please, Poliana. Thank you, Paul. Can you hear me? Okay. So can I put this? Oh, is it possible to do Uh, so I'm from I'm Poliana from the University of São Paulo in São Carlos. So technically, I'm no longer at the the, the physics department there. I'm actually in between jobs. So if anybody's looking for a postdoc, and uh <laughs> so this would be a nice way to <laughs> to say that uh, I'm looking for a job. And uh, so this work, I, I was still in São Carlos when is we started this work. And I actually decided to, so the main topic, uh, the title of my talk is about Cita Bevego in 2D topological insulators. But I decided to divide my talk into, into parts. In one of them, I'll talk about something it's all 2D, but not the 2D that uh, everybody's talking about, like graphene or TMDCs. But uh, you see that uh, I still have 2D in my talk. And uh, I'll talk about uh, the Zita Bewegung and also about uh, spin orbit coupling in uh, Wurzeit materials. And I guess nobody said anything. Um. Not working. Ah, I thought we had put here. It's working. So I guess nobody who is uh, from São Carlos talked about where São Carlos is. I know many of you have been there already. And uh, so we are here in Natal. And São Carlos is in the middle of the state of São Paulo. So we are not actually, uh, so this is the state of São Paulo. And São Carlos is quite in the middle of the state. So we are not particularly uh, known for the food like here or cachaça or anything like that, but uh, we are known for the, actually the seat of technology. And uh, so we have two main universities, the University of Sao Paulo and uh, the University of Sao Carlos, the Federal University of Sao Carlos. And uh, according to a survey in 2019, São Carlos is uh, the city with the highest number of PhDs per inhabitant. It's like uh, almost a hundred times more than uh, the rest of Brazil. And this is a picture of the campus and of uh, our institute. So it's a nice campus. I know many of you have been there and uh, I'm pretty sure you enjoyed it. So the two topics again is are the Zita Bewegung and uh, a spin orbit coupling in uh, Wurzeit materials. I'm actually gonna talk about quantum health and also about the bulk, uh, about bulk materials. So what is the, the common uh, ingredient between these two topics? So the common ingredient here is the spin orbit coupling. So this is uh, a spin orbit coupling is uh, involved in almost all the, the work I have done so far. And uh, these are just two of them. So the outline of my, of my talk, I'll talk a little bit just about renewed interest in the spin orbit coupling. 
and I'll give you two points of view related to the two po topics I'll talk about. And I'll go from the basics to s sort of some applications. This is very far, far from uh, experiments, like the previous talk. And uh, I'll then advertise this work in, uh, in roadside materials and then talk about the Zita Bevelium. Uh, so from the basics point of view, uh, in topological insulators, uh, spin orbit coupling, and not only the spin orbit coupling, but relativistic effects, as we saw previous last week, uh, they play a, an important role. For example, in uh, materials like uh, mercury telluride, it can actually uh, invert the bands. In a normal semiconductor like gallium arsenide, or in this case it's cadmium telluride, you'd have the gamma-6 band here, so the S states, and here you'd have the gamma-8 states. But then, uh, as mercury is a heavy, it's a heavy material, then you'd have a uh, uh, spin orbit and the, the mass velocity term playing a role, and then inverting the bands. This is all bulk. And then what happens if you confine these materials, like uh, you have like a strip, you have a ribbon, you'd have like a, a cadmium telluride, a heterostructure of cadmium telluride and uh, mercury telluride. What happens is that you now have uh, the appearance of uh, what we call edge states in 2D. And these edge states are time reversal protected. And uh, we see that momentum and spin are locked in these edge states. So you have spins up with a uh, positive velocity and the spins down with negative velocity. And this was already measured in, uh, in 2007. It was the first experiment and in which you can see the features of the, 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 these edge states, the conductors in these edge states. So from the point of view of uh, more, let's say, applications, uh, if you were dealing, uh, if you were talking about the spring spintronics, you were talking, you usually talk about the spin orbit coupling, and you would like to, to have a way to control the the coupling. And uh, so we know that we can control the, the Rajba coupling, for example, we can control it electrically. And uh, so this work, I'll mention this as a motivation for the Wurzite work. So this work was, uh, it's done in a zinc plant material. And uh, they have the Kane Hamiltonian the 8x8 eight eight Kane model, we are using K.P here. And in this, uh, when you have, uh, when you go fr from the bulk to the quantum L, and you have like, here we are more interested in the electronic part. So from the 8x8, eight eight we go to a 2x2 two two, uh, Hamiltonian. This is actually 4x4, four four, but uh, we go for a 2x2, two in which we are only interested in the electrons. So in this paper, they, they actually projected this 2x2 two two Hamiltonian. Uh, so we have two subbands now, the, the, the quantum L subbands. And they, they saw some nice features uh, when using this model. These features are, for example, they found in some regimes non-zero non ballistic spin hole conductivity. And they can also see, if you calculate the Zeta Bewegung here, they can see unusual orbits. Different from, for example, if you only had one subband with the Rajva coupling. Uh, so again, I'm interested in this, uh, in this 8x8 model in which I have the conduction band and the, the valence band, the gamma-8 valence band. So this is all zinc plant still. And what we do is we, we obtain this 8x8 model. And we fold uh, 
we fold this down and look for, for the effective Hamiltonian for the electrons. So if you, if you do this and then project into two subbands, what you have is something, is this 4 by 4 Hamiltonian. You have the Rajva, here I'm only using Rajva, so you have the Rajva Hamiltonian for the first and the second subband, and then you have uh, a new term that connects these two sub subspace, which looks like a Rajva inter subband. And it's these terms here that play a role, for example, in the Zita Bewegung in the system, and also in the non-zero spin hole conductivity. So this is, uh, in this paper here, they actually characterize a, uh, a zinc plant material. This is gallium and arsenide. And they, we can obtain, uh, from the, the K dot P Hamiltonian and the effective Hamiltonian, we self-consistently calculate these constants, the parameters eta, alpha, beta here is the Dresselhaus term, but we can actually obtain these values, and here is a function of uh, a gate, uh, uh, an applied gate voltage. So we can see that we can actually, I have alpha here, so we can see that we can actually, tuning the voltage, we can control alpha and also, for example, eta, which is the inter band coupling. So motivated by this work in zinc plant, well, before that, you can actually derive a, uh, an expression, a two by two expression, a general form for a 3D confinement, which is a famous uh, equation in Winkler's book. So what we did, uh, so this is the, the Wurzeit uh, crystal and uh, the symmetry of the crystal is different from zinc plant. And because of the, there is a, uh, there is a broken symmetry here. Uh, we obtain new terms if we, we use the eight by eight K model and then obtain a two by two uh, electronic Hamiltonian. So we, we can actually see that uh, due to the broken symmetry. Now we have that the, the valence band and one of the, the, sorry, the conduction band and one of the valence band, they now have the same symmetry. And this allows for the appearance of a new term, which is called, it's a Rajva-like term, but it already appears in the bulk. It's different from zinc plant. In zinc plant, you only have this, uh, the appearance of the Rajva if you have some external applied field. So this, is, this was already established, and Paolo also studied this uh, some time ago. But we are actually interested in heterostructures. And uh, what we do is that we self-consistent, so this is the, the potential that is applied to the to the system, and so we self consistent obtain the spin orbit couplings. Uh, in this case here, alpha and beta, which is the Dresselhaus term, they have the same symmetry. So we have here an uh, an effective uh, spin orbit coupling, and we can actually see that the bulk uh, coupling here plays a a big role. But the, the new thing, the, the what I wanted to sort of ad advertise here is that we, c we can actually obtain some effective Schrodinger equation. It's a two by two equation for the electrons, for the conduction band. And uh, I'm showing here, it's a very, it's a huge e equation, but this is similar to, to what Winkler's ob Winkler obtained for uh, zinc plant. So this is uh, just the diagonal part. So we can calculate the effective masses. And also there is the Darwin term here. 
and uh, there are other terms that appear. So this is the term. This equation includes uh, lambda levels. So this is, uh, this is the magnetic part. We can see that there is a Zeeman term. And the interesting part is the spin orbit coupling, which we can see here has the Rajva symmetry. And uh, most of the terms are proportional to this, uh, what we call delta SZ, which is the coupling now because uh, valence band, one of the valence bands, and conduction band, they have uh, the same symmetry. So it allows for the appearance of new terms in this uh, Hamiltonian. So this, uh, this Hamiltonian should be compared to, to what I showed before in uh, the equation in Winkler's book. So this actually, uh, together with, for example, DFT for obtaining the parameters, we can use this equation for wells, for uh, dots and wires. And uh, the application I showed before, it's what we did for a well with uh, two subbands. And they are, I'm not showing here, but there are different features from the, the zinc blend uh, Hamiltonian, from the zinc blend uh, spin orbit couplings. So I'll now, I'll now talk about the... the Poliana, before I move on, one question you. about this uh, spin orbit coupling. How large is the contribution of the piezoelectric and uh, spontaneous polarization? of your uh, of the alpha and beta that you showed it's actually the piezoelectric uh, uh, potential that uh, gives the this curvature here uh, it's the main contribution for the for the coupling uh, varying with uh, the the gate So I'll now talk about the Zita Bewegung in uh, 2D topological insulators. And, uh, oh, sorry. Oh, something went wrong. <laughs> oh, this was not supposed to be here. <laughs> sorry. So the Zita Bewegung uh, well, was uh, originally already studied uh, by Schrodinger in the Dirac uh, in the Dirac equation and there you have uh, because you have the positive and uh, negative energies then you have uh, some uh, unusual uh, sort of a trajectory for for the electrons and uh, so they will actually perform something like this a what Zita Bevengu is like a trembling motion so before uh, this was studied in 2D topological insulators. Uh, this was actually studied in uh, Rajva systems, uh, in which you have the Hamiltonian is just uh, the kinetic part and just the Rajva. Here it could be the Rajva or the Dresselhaus uh, uh, spin orbit term, or both of them. So what uh, initially was, uh, so I if you perform this and uh, use like uh, the Heisenberg picture, you can obtain the equations, the, the equation of motion for uh, X and Y. And here, because you have a spin orb coupling, uh, you have a similar uh, pattern for the, the electron trajectory. And what happens if you, if you include an electric field. So this is actually what uh, I'm going to do later. I'm just going to show here. So if you have the Zeta Bewegung, so this Hamiltonian, and you include the electric field, what you see is this feature. Is that this is done for plane waves. So you have this feature in which the, the, the electric field uh, sort of produces a psi jump. So we can see it here, and then it oscillates around this uh, this position. So this happens for Rajva, uh, the Rajva Romantonian, or the the, the Dresselhaus. 
Uh, I'm sorry here. Here I'm just showing that uh, if you go, it's just comparing Gaussian wave packets uh, and plane waves, and uh, in the limit in in the limit in which you have uh, uh, a big package package, you you recover what the plane waves uh, is giving you. So this is actually this was done by John, and uh, this is actually a picture from a reference. Uh, oh, sorry. So in which they stood uh, the 2D topological insulators. So this is actually for gallium arsenide, in which we can see the, the splitting. Uh, uh, red and blue are the different spins. So you can see that uh, the, the spins are split here. And the different, uh, the dashed lines in the, the solid lines are just uh, different initial conditions. So what happens in topological insulators? So what we did, we studied, we used the, a, an effective Hamiltonian, which is the bernevik hughes jung model, the BHZ model, I'll refer to that like that. Uh, in which, th so this Hamiltonian is also obtained, you can obtain it uh, via k.p, just like I showed before. But here you have to include, you have to do a folding for electrons and uh, holes. And uh, so this is the Hamiltonian. And uh, as I showed before, if you confine this, uh, if you calculate this, this Hamiltonian in a confined system, you get the, the edge states. So what we did is uh, we applied a Oh, an electric field, sorry, and calculated the dynamics via the air and fast equations. So this is a his result uh, of this paper. Is uh, and also let me just uh, say that uh, this uh, gap here is given by this term here, which is the mass term. And if you have uh, m positive, you would not uh, see the edge states. But then if you have the M uh, negative, then you would have the edge states. So what they do here, they, they put M uh, negative, and they observe that uh, the same feature that we saw in uh, gallium arsenide. So you have the splitting of spins here, the same way as uh, gallium arsenide. And Using, still using this approach, they actually confined this and calculated again the Zeta Bewegung. And what they see is that uh, you have, uh, so these are the edges. And so you see that th there is something. Uh, so apparently, what happens is that the electrons are staying, are sort of migrating to the edges. So the question is. Is this a semi-classical picture for the quantum spin hall effect? Uh, so this is what uh, this paper claims is it is. So that this is the edge, the electrons going to the edge. So we did a more sort of more careful analysis, and uh, we use also the dynamic, the 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 air and fast equations. Here I'm just showing that uh, indeed what we obtain if you have the mass, the positive, the, the negative mass, for different uh, initial conditions, you will observe also the side jump because of the presence of the electric field. And here, depending on the the initial condition, the electrons would go, the trajectory would go this way or this way, and this is for a short time. And when you go to a, a much larger time, then you sort of get uh, the, the motion is uh, saturated here. So th these oscillations are characteristic of the Zeta Bewegung. And if you change here, I started with uh, this initial condition. And if you start with uh, this other type of initial condition, you would think uh, different orbits.
So this is all, uh, this calculation is done uh, in bulk. So now if I confine my, uh, if I add confinement to my Hamiltonian, what happens to, to the edge, to the, uh, to the, to the role played by the edge states in this Zeta uh, Bewegung picture. So uh, what we use is uh, the Houston functions approach in which now the electric field, uh, which is applied in, in the x direction, we will enter the Hamiltonian as a vector potential. So now the Hamiltonian is time dependent. So you can actually so the develop the equations and uh, what you get in the end, one of these terms is uh, the Berry connection. And we analyze this numerically and also uh, in the limits in which the, the ribbon is uh, wide. And we, we show that uh, uh, this guy here actually gives the, the coupling between the bulk and the edges. So it's like uh, if you are in bulk, uh, can you actually populate the edges? So this, uh, this term here will give you the answer for that. So this is the Landau's inner tunneling. And what we actually see, if you plot these are, uh, this is this is the the a, a real plot for a strip, uh, in in which you have the edge states here. And we then calculate the the Berry connection. So the color code here indicates the the Berry connection. And I'm calculating the, the coupling between this edge and uh, the other uh, bulk bands and also the, this other edge here. And we can see that uh, it's actually the, the coupling between the edge and the bulk is quite small. Here is just the, the we are uh, plotting the wave function, the square root, of the square of the, the wave function just to show the that they are confined uh, in the edges. And uh, we also analyze the, the Berry connection as a fun function of kx. And here we can also see that varying the, the size of the, the strip, this uh, Berry connection is uh, quite negligible. And here is just to show uh, how it uh, varies with uh, uh, the, the size of the strip. And we, sh we can actually analytically show that uh, this coupling here goes, uh, it decreases with uh, this uh, W here. This, uh, the, the width of the, of the this so from here we can see that uh, the bulk edge coupling is negligible. So this is already an indication that there is uh, the, the bulk is not populating the edges. So then to complement this, uh, this study, we this is just to show that uh, this is still in the, the regime of the air and fast equations but we are sort of extrapolating its uh, validity. And then we are showing that for some initial condition, even if you have, so this is the edge, and then you have uh, negative mass and also positive mass, which means that uh, the system is not, uh, is topologically trivial. So even in this case, you would have a similar behavior. So this plot here would show that for both topological non-trivial and topological trivial, you would have uh, uh, the, the electrons going to the edge, which is the, the wrong picture. Uh, so as I said, this uh, leads to the wrong conclusion that uh, in both cases I would have, uh, I would be 
populating the edges. And this is true, as I said, because the air infest uh, equations are being used uh, beyond their uh, validity. And the this is the same uh, picture, it's just different uh, type of uh, initial conditions uh, in which I see that uh, the I we can see that the electrons bounce off uh, the edges here, so they are not really staying in the edge. And uh, to just to 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 s to prove that uh, this picture we are we are getting the correct picture, we solve the uh, the Schrödinger equation, the complete Schrödinger equation. Uh, and we actually show that, uh, so this is the numerical calculation. We show that uh, indeed uh, the, the bulk is not really populating the edges. So this is the air infest, and then uh, it's just the center of the curve. Here, uh, the, the colors is just the, the sigma y component of spin. So I can see that the spins are changing, and but they are not really staying on the edge, so they bounce off and uh, go back to the bulk. And this is uh, for uh, different initial conditions, and also here for uh, the this is the for the non-trivial uh, regime, and this is for the trivial regime, and we can see the same features here. So uh, from this, we can conclude that. Uh, the Zeta Bewegung is not really the, the semi-classical picture to describe the quantum spin hall effect. This could uh, be connected to the spin hall effect, but not to the quantum spin hall effect. So these are just my conclusions. And uh, I would like to thank, so these two works uh, were done with Gerson, who is here, and the Zeta Bewegung with uh, one of his students, and these other people at the time were uh, in São Carlos, but now they are moved somewhere else. Thank you. Thank you, Poliana. We have time for a quick question. Thanks, Poliana. I wasn't catching what observable, measurable consequences that I could find from the Zeta Bewegung. Um, I'm not sure I follow your... Like you did some nice calculations, you see these things as moving, but it's on a very small oh, length sorry. scale. Can you make some measurable predictions that result from the Zeta Bewegung? Mm. 